There are approximately 10 states in the United States that are affected by invasive deer's populations. They are present throughout farms and urban areas. A series of car accidents are caused by deers running across the road. You'd also want to know the many measures that the people of the United States have taken to deal with invasive deer's populations. Mouse Farm will show you the most effective methods in this video. Now let's keep watching together. The surge in deer populations in the United States has created a series of challenges for farmers and the environment. Deers are herbivores. They gnaw on many different types of plants, from grass to trees and crops. Every year, they often appear in fields, creating a great threat to the crops. Invasive deers can cause about $1.5 billion in damage each year to the U.S. farms. According to estimates by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, this damage includes not only damage to crops, but also affects the infrastructure and the livestock. With approximately 30 million deer in the United States, the population is growing rapidly creating enormous pressure on the ecosystem and economy. Uncontrolled growth causes growing challenges. All the times. Invasive deers not only reduce crop yields, but also increase agricultural production costs. Farmers face constant challenges in protecting their crops and assets. Deers excrete feces and urine directly in the fields, causing environmental pollution. This can affect water and soil quality, creating a worrying environmental problem. Overall, managing deer populations becomes increasingly important to minimize damage and maintain a balance between humans, animals, and the environment. Deers can become aggressive when threatened or when protecting their children. This creates a particular danger for children and the elderly. Deers' attacks can cause injuries and death. As we enter the 21st century, we are facing an unexpected challenge to traffic safety in the United States. Deers cause traffic accidents. The situation becomes dangerous when deers not only invade residential areas, but are also causing many traffic accidents. According to statistics from the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, referred to as the NHTSA. Each year, there are about 200,000 traffic accidents caused by deers, with a significant number of death injuries. This not only creates a dangerous situation for traffic safety, but also causes a huge financial waste for the community. The estimated economic loss due to traffic accidents caused by deers each year is about $1.1 billion. This cost includes vehicle repairs, medical care, and insurances. Deer's hunting is a popular activity in the United States. Especially in rural areas, hunters often choose areas with many deers, such as forests, grasslands, and farms, to begin their adventures. The 
The hunting process takes place by hunters searching for deers and using hunting tools. If the deer is not dead after the first shot, the hunter will continue until it's dead. Daytime hunting offers many advantages such as better visibility, increased success rates, and a diverse selection of hunting methods. In the United States, many states such as New York, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Texas offers daytime hunting licenses. However, regulations can vary from a state to another, so hunters should check carefully before setting out. Daytime deer hunting is not only a sport, but also provides unique recreational experiences, bringing participants closer to nature and at the same time, enjoying the fresh air of the countryside. Night deer hunting in the United States is an Deer hunting in snowy fields is a popular activity in the United States during the winter. The hunter moves through the snow field, looking for deer tracks, and then uses a rifle to make a hunting shot. This offers many advantages including being easier for deers to see against the white snow and the ability to reach them more easily. Deer hunting in snowy fields not only provides an enjoyable experience, but also helps control deer populations and maintain natural balance. Licensed in areas with heavy snowfall and large deer populations, the activity requires hunters to comply with specific state regulations. In addition, preparing the right gear for cold weather. Hunters also need to be careful when traveling in the snow and follow state safety regulations. Deer hunting in snowy fields is not only a hobby, but also a responsibility requiring attention and respect for the natural environment. Doing this activity properly will provide a unique experience and protect our natural resources. There are many different ways to deal with invasive deer populations. Now let's go to other areas in the United States to see how farmers are dealing with deer populations. Let's keep watching. Wild boars. Pa in addition to hunting, a new method has been applied in some areas in the United States which is the use of aircraft to monitor and control wild boars. This is a challenging but potentially effective measure to reduce wild boar numbers and protect crop farms. The combination of traditional measures and a new method could help the United States deal with the growing problem of wild boar attacks on agricultural farms. The first step in wild boar hunting is to hire a suitable aircraft to carry out the task. Hunters often choose between helicopters and propeller planes, each with its own advantages. Helicopters are a popular choice due to their ability to fly lower and more flexible. They help hunters easily access hunting areas and observe wild boars from a vantage point.
This aircraft is often used in areas with complex terrain and requires flexibility during hunting. Propeller aircraft. They're faster and also capable of moving quickly between hunting areas. This helps hunters to quickly deal with wild boars moving or spotted in different locations. After renting a suitable plane, the hunter gets on the plane and flies to the hunting area. Before taking off, they thoroughly check safety equipment and hunting gear to make sure everything is working properly. When arriving at the hunting area, hunters use scopes to search for wild boars. Wild boars often gather in areas with lots of food and water, such as rice fields, corn fields, or forests with streams. However, it is often easier to find wild boars in crop fields than in fairly open and dense forested areas. In rice fields, hunters have wider vision and can easily observe wild boars from afar. This is where wild boars often appear to search for food such as corn seeds and other rice plants. When hunters notice a wild boar in the field, they can approach cautiously to shoot it. However, the most difficult situation for hunters is when they have to search for wild boars in dense forest areas or with more complex terrain. In these cases, wild boars may hide in the forest and use the terrain for cover and protection from hunting. Hunters will have to rely on their scope and observation skills to identify wild boar attacks and signs such as tracks, feeding areas, or footprints. When a wild boar is detected, the hunter informs the pilot and together they fly to the wild boar's location. Then, the hunter uses a hunting gun to shoot down the target animal. Typically, wild boars are shot from the back of the head or the neck to ensure the kill is quick and effective. The average range of a helicopter when hunting is about 750 feet. That means the helicopter can hit targets 750 feet away. There are hunting devices that can shoot at a range of 1,000 feet, so hunting can be done in many different ways with many skills. When the wild boar is downed, the plane lands and the hunter harvests the wild boar. This may include cutting, packaging, and transporting wild boars to processing areas or the market for sale. However, it should be noted that hunting wild boar by plane has its own advantages and disadvantages. Although this method allows hunters to access areas that are difficult to reach, by road and can hunt many wild boars in a short time. It also has high costs and can be dangerous for people and other animals in the area. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, in 2023, hunters in the U.S. will hunt about one million boars. However, this data may vary by time and specific region. The U.S. Fish 
and Wildlife Service estimates that currently the number of feral swines in the United States is about 1.2 million. Wild boars attacks on crop farms are occurring in many areas of the United States, especially in the eastern and southern states. The rapid increase in the number of wild boar requires the use of objective measures to control the situation, and hunting by aircraft has become a useful method in the fight against attacks by the species. The question here is, why do wild boars move to urban areas? Someone said that about 10 years ago, there was a man walking through the forest. He encountered a wild boar in the way and fit it. This action of his opened the door for wild boars to approach the city. Wild boar feeding in the city is happening a lot. Therefore, the first thing is not to feed wild boars. Feeding wild boars in the city is strictly prohibited so that bad things don't happen. In addition, houses and areas where people live should build fences to prevent wild boars from entering people's houses. This man told us about wild boars appearing around his house. They travel in search of food, causing destruction to the surrounding environment. He immediately bought materials to build a fence around the house. This fence can not only prevent wild boars from entering, it can also prevent many other species from attacking his house. Simply using wood to make them, the price is quite cheap compared to some other types of fences. Besides limiting wild boars' intrusions, this wooden fence also carries a series of other benefits. First of all, using wood as the main material helps minimizing the impact on the environment, such as using materials as metal or plastic. It also promotes the regeneration of wood trees, helping to protect forests and meet environmental protection goals. Not only that, the flexibility of wooden fences also allows for easy replacement and maintenance when needed. This means saving time and money in maintaining infrastructure. Keeping dogs in the family isn't only a safety measure for your home and security, but also a form of creating a special bond between humans and your pets. Dogs are always loyal companions, always ready to protect and care for their families. Taking your dog for a walk in the evening not only creates a good opportunity to relax and enjoy natural spaces, but is also especially useful and protecting against wild boar attacks. You have the ability to be alert and detect the presence of wild boars before you, allowing you to take timely preventative measures. Furthermore, they also demonstrate patience and concern for you when wild boars approach your home area. 
they will bravely face this threat and will not hesitate to chase them away, protecting your space from encroachment by wild creatures. In some areas of the city, many people raise wild boars as pets. They feed them milk and family foods. Moreover, they also let them rest and live in their house. And sometimes, this could be a little dangerous for the family. There are species that live in herds. If they are unlucky, they will smell the characteristic scent of pigs in your house and come towards you. Although it may feel very familiar to raise wild boars and treat them like family members, remember that they are wild and their nature is still in them. In a moment, they can turn into a dangerous threat, especially when they feel hungry or excited by the smell of food. Keeping wild boars indoors isn't only dangerous, but can also disrupt the harmony of their environment and affect their naturalness. Therefore, wild boars should not be raised under any circumstances. If wild boars appear around your area, immediately report them to the police. The police will come and deal with this dangerous threat. Someone told us one day that a very large wild boar appeared in the park and they took over the sand as their resting area. The surrounding people were very scared and called the police. They came and solved the problem. They chased them away from residential areas, ensuring people's safety. This clearly shows the importance of maintaining cooperation with authorities. The police are always ready to respond to dangerous situations protecting the community from unforeseen threats. However, warning and creating information about the appearance of wild boars also plays an important role. When we work together, we have the ability to create safer environments for everyone. The encroachment of wild boars into cities is largely due to humans. You need to be very careful when handling household waste. Do not throw trash in such public places. As they will attract wild boars and wild boars will pollute the area immediately. Do not go alone in areas where wild boars often appear. It is very dangerous for you. If there are any measures that I haven't mentioned, please comment them down below in the comment section to let us know. And for now, let's continue watching the rest of the video. Wolves, a predator native to Europe and Asia have become an increasingly serious problem in the United States. Initially, they were introduced into the country for hunting and recreational purposes. However, wolves' rapid adaptation to new environments has turned them into a worrying invasive species.
wolves, have caused many worrying problems for the agricultural industry and local communities. One of the biggest problems is that they hunt livestock, causing loss of livestock numbers and huge economic losses for farmers. This is one of the sheep farms attacked by wolves. A series of injured sheep lay on the floor. In addition, the appearance of wolves also causes confusion and anxiety in the local community. People living in the wolf-infested areas often face mental and financial pressure, and they do feel unsafe in their daily lives. However, to deal with this problem, there are many measures that can be taken. Trapping is a traditional method used to capture wolves and control their numbers in specific areas. In addition, hunting wolves is an effective method to reduce their existence in the wild, although environmental protection regulations must be followed. Furthermore, farms can implement increased security measures such as building fences, using flawed lights, and hunting dogs to prevent wolves from entering their areas. This helps protect livestock and crops from coyote attacks while also creating a safer environment for communities. Monkeys are also one of the invasive species whose population are rapidly increasing. They are present everywhere on the streets. They attack people in tourist areas and beaches. Monkeys can transmit infectious diseases to humans and other animals through close contact. This creates a threat to the health of humans and wildlife. Fruits and agricultural products are also greatly damaged by this species. They are one of the most intelligent and agile species. A sudden increase in monkey population could cause many problems for humans in agriculture. The attack and destroy farms causing economic loss and scaring local communities. Monkey hunting may become a necessary solution to control this situation. Monkey hunting can protect farms from their destruction, ensure food sources for the community and maintain a stable economic life. In addition, Controlling the monkey population also helps prevent disease transmission and protect human health. However, monkey hunting needs to follow regulations and rules on environmental and wildlife protection. This ensures sustainability and protects other animals from being affected. Monkey hunting shouldn't be seen as an absolute solution but should be combined with other measures, such as creating reserve areas for monkeys and educating communities on how to live in harmony with them. Next, we have wild boars. The wild boar is a mammal originating from Europe, and it was present in the United States for the original purpose of hunting and entertainment. However, no one could have imagined that wild boars quickly adapted to the new environment and became one of the invasive species of concern in the country. The adaptation not only benefits them, but also causes many problems for agriculture and environment. Wild boars often destroy crops and orchards, reducing productivity and harvests for farmers.
This vandalism not only causes economic loss, but also threatens the community's food source. In addition to stealing food from farms, they also compete with wild animals, causing damage to the ecological system. The adaptation of wild boars isn't limited to destroying crops, but is also related to the environmental pollution. They often have difficulty disposing of waste, and their waste can pollute the environment and harm water sources. To control wild boar numbers and reduce their impact, there are numbers of measures that can be taken. Using traps is a traditional method of catching wild boars, helping to control their numbers in specific areas. In addition, hunting wild boars is also an effective method to reduce their existence in the wild. However, this needs to comply with regulations and rules on environmental and wildlife protection. It should be noted that controlling the wild boar population needs to be done in a considered manner to ensure sustainability and protect other animal species from being affected. At the same time, it is necessary to research and apply other solutions to protect the natural environment in agriculture to deal with this problem. So despite having wild boars originating for recreational and hunting purposes, but they have become a worrying threat to agriculture and environment. Managing and controlling their numbers is an important task to protect their lives and livelihoods. Most of the fields and farms are facing a challenging situation, locust attack. Known for their insatiable appetite, they eat everything they come across as they go and leave not a single patch of vegetation untouched. Even mango trees in flowering season, an important source of economic profit, can Hand spraying is suitable for areas with small areas, complex terrain and limited costs. This is especially important when you are faced with hard to reach areas. Spraying by machine is suitable for areas with large areas, flat terrain and large enough budget. Investment in specialized machinery can pay off with greater efficiency and effectiveness in managing locust swarms. Each method of spraying grasshoppers has its own advantages and disadvantages. Choosing the appropriate locust spraying method needs to be done carefully and evaluated based on the specific situation of the farm and environment. This will help optimize performance in controlling locust swarms and protecting the environment. Choosing the right spraying method can be a smart choice to ensure sustainable development of agriculture. Legumes such as mung beans, black beans and soybeans are valuable assets in agriculture, not only because of their nutritional value, but also because of their ability to withstand locust invasions.
They contain tamane, a compound that prevents grasshoppers from eating leaves. Thanks to the existence of this substance, these beans can create an unpleasant environment for grasshoppers and prevent them from continuing to harm crops. However, maintaining a healthy agricultural environment that doesn't promote locust growth is also important. This can be done through planting thick crops to shield each other, watering and fertilizing plants well for healthy growth, and regularly inspecting gardens to detect and destroy grasshoppers timely. Sparrows, although not known for their flashy appearance, are becoming one of the major disasters for farmers in the United States. This omnivorous bird not only favors seeds, but also enjoys a variety of foods, from grains to fruits and vegetables. Of particular concern to farmers, However, they also have the ability to eat seeds and grains as soon as they are planted in the ground, leaving the crop without a chance to germinate. Sparrows are the most common bird species in the United States and are causing heavy damage to the agricultural industry, especially in planting and harvesting. This is one of the birds that farmers do not want to encounter, not because of their flashy appearance, but because of their seed-eating habits. Knit traps and glue traps have become familiar tools in the fight against sparrows. Placing these traps in areas where birds commonly appear can be effective in persecuting sparrows. Depending on state laws, many places allow sparrow hunting as means of controlling the species. However, regulations and limits need to be followed to protect the sustainability of this bird. Hunting sparrows is one of the accepted control measures for this species in many U.S. states. However, this requires compliance with regulations and limits to protect the sustainability of this bird. May not be on the list of fiercest wars in history, but for farmers in the United States, it is a fierce battle. By combining traditional countermeasures and using advanced technology, farmers hope to protect their crops from the destructive hands of sparrows. It is not a military war, but this war is still taking place on the fields of America. Pigeons, with their large appearance and diverse diet, have become a source of concern for farmers in the United States. This bird not only causes a nascence, but also possesses a potential risk of great damage to the agriculture and crops of many people. Pigeons aren't small creatures. We often see them around the city parks. They are large and capable of consuming a significant amount of food at one time. Seeds and grains such as wheat, corn, and oats are their favorites, and this makes them a major threat to farmers' crops. Regardless of whether the crop has just been planted in the ground, 
or is in the growing stage. Pigeons do not hesitate to germinate potential opportunities for farmers' crops. Farmers have had to diverse many countermeasures to protect their crops from pigeon intrusion. One of the simplest but effective measures is to use net traps. Net traps help farmers catch pigeons easily and effectively. Additionally, some U.S. states allow pigeon hunting legally. Pigeon hunting is not only a recreational activity, but also a means of controlling the number of the species in the world. This is especially important in areas where pigeons have become so common that they can harm agriculture. The war against pigeons is being waged across American agriculture. Farmers are consistently looking for and applying countermeasures such as net trapping and hunting to protect their crops from the threat of pigeons. With intelligence and creativity, they hope that they can maintain agricultural prosperity and prevent pigeons from becoming a serious threat to this economy. Quails, despite their small size, they're very attracted to pastures and grain fields. They mainly eat seeds and grains, such as wheat, corn, and soybeans. These crops are often targeted by quails, and they may eat them as soon as they are planted in the ground. When precious seeds are eaten by them, farmers' crops can be seriously threatened. Farmers are facing the challenge of controlling quails. Although these birds are small, they can cause great damage to agriculture. Therefore, effective control measures are needed to protect plants and crops. Knit traps and glue traps are commonly used methods to catch quails. However, for this bird, catching wild traps isn't always effective because they can run fast and they can move quickly. Additionally, quail hunting is also allowed and even part of the hunting culture in many American states. Hunting can help control quail populations in the wild and minimize their impact on crops. Another measure is to grow plants that taste unpleasant to quails, such as chili peppers, lemongrass, and mint. These plants can keep quails away from main crop areas. Finally, using advanced technology such as drones, motion detectors, can help farmers detect and repel quail more effectively. Drones are capable of scanning large nets, looking for areas where quail often appear. This helps farmers understand the situation and can take appropriate control measures. Thanks to the combination of technology and traditional methods, farmers have the opportunity to more effectively control the number of quails that harm their crops and agriculture. However, this still requires patience and regular care. To ensure that birds do not cause serious damage to crop yields. However, controlling birds that destroy crops isn't an easy task and requires the coordination of many parties, including farmers, authorities, and communities. Only through cooperation and the use of measures can we successfully deal with the quail threat and protect our agriculture?
Hello friends, wild boars often live hidden in forests. They will go looking for food at night in groups. The food source in the forest dries up, they begin to move to swamp areas and fields. They eat insects and mud and soil. The plants they encounter are also invisible. Farmers were very concerned about this problem and the solution that the government issued were implemented immediately. Wild boars, as wild animals, can cause a lot of damage to farms and livestock because their ability to dig in the ground, eat grass and crops, and injure livestock. To prevent wild boars from entering crop and livestock areas, safety fences have been proven to be an effective measure. Safety fences can be made from a variety of materials, including steel wire, wire mesh, electric fences, and walls. The height of these fences should be high enough to prevent wild boars from entering or jumping over it. This piece should be buried deep into the ground to prevent pigs from digging. Commonly used fences range in height from 3 to 10 feet. The fence posts will be buried about 1 foot in the soil. To ensure the effectiveness of safety fences, farmers need to use high quality materials, install them properly and regularly, inspect them to detect and repair damage. By properly constructing and maintaining safety fences, farmers can help protect their property and income from wild boars. Traps are also one of the methods offered and used. Deep pit traps are the most common type of trap and are widely used to catch wild boars. Just create deep holes in areas where wild boars often appear. You can successfully catch a herd of wild boars. To use traps effectively, placing them correctly is important. You should place traps and baskets in places where wild boars often pass by. To increase your chances of catching them, The bait needs to be attractive to wild boars. With common baits including corn, sweet potatoes, and meat. In particular, you need to hide the trap and basket carefully so that the wild boar does not detect it. This may include covering them up or using other concealment techniques. Always check traps and regularly make sure they're working properly and always be ready to catch a wild boar. The Texas State Police Department has used helicopters to hunt feral hogs in rural areas. This method has helped minimizing damage to crops and livestock. Helicopters and drones can move quickly and easily to reach places that are hard to reach. This allows authorities to hunt wild boars in areas that cannot be reached by other methods. Using helicopters and drones
can help reduce the risk of injury to humans and animals. Authorities can shoot wild boars from a distance, which can help minimizing the risk of accidentally shooting another person or animal. Using helicopters and drones can help save costs for the authorities. Traditional hunting methods such as rifle hunting can be more expensive. These areas where wild boars can live and find food without harming farmers' crops and livestock. They can safely survive in this area without any interference from humans. Establishing conservation areas can help strike a balance between protecting wild pigs and ensuring farm safety. In addition to establishing conservation areas, managing wild boar populations in a sustainable manner is also an important part of the control strategy. Relevant organizations, together with farmers, need to ensure that wild boar populations do not overgrow, especially in areas close to farms. This may require conducting population assessments, tracking the historical growth charts of feral pigs, determining appropriate control measures such as capture or relocation of populations to conservation areas. Looking at the chart, you can also see what level the wild boar population is at. Farmers today have realized the power of technology and smart farming techniques in protecting crop and livestock areas from wild boar invasion. Using cameras to monitor crop and livestock areas has become an important tool to help farmers monitor wild boar activities in real time. Surveillance camera systems continuously record images and videos, allowing farmers to review data and detect the presence of wild boars. Some farmers also use a combination of cameras and GPS to track wild boars and identify risk areas. When the camera records the appearance of wild boars, information about location and time will be recorded via GPS This helps to pinpoint areas requiring intervention and establish specific control measures. This not only helps minimizing damage from their invasion, but also ensures the protection of the environment and agriculture, and that maintains farmers' income sources. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well. There are approximately 10 states in the United States that are affected by invasive deer's populations. They are present throughout farms and urban areas. A series of car accidents are caused by deers running across the road. You'd also want to know the many measures that the people of the United States have taken a deal with invasive deer's populations. Mouse Farm will show you the most effective methods in this video. Now let's keep watching together. The surge in deer populations in the United States has created a series of challenges for farmers and the environment. Deers are herbivores. 
the non-many different types of plants, from grass to trees and crops. Every year, they often appear in fields, creating a great threat to the crops. Invasive deers can cause about $1.5 billion in damage each year to the U.S. farms. According to estimates by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, this damage includes not only damage to crops, but also affects the infrastructure and the livestock. With approximately 30 million deer in the United States, the population is growing rapidly, creating enormous pressure on the ecosystem.